Lucy is in transit. She's on a very busy train, surrounded by people heading to their various destinations. When Lucy arrives at her station, she alights along with the other passengers. On one of the pillars at the train station, a poster is prominently displayed, informing the public about a missing person. The missing individual is Lily Bridges. At her workplace, Lucy walks straight to her desk, her gaze mostly downcast as she makes her way. She is greeted by Natsuko, her colleague whose desk is right beside hers. Natsuko welcomes Lucy back. Lucy hasn't yet seen the newspaper and the story it carries, so Natsuko signals to another colleague to pass Lucy a copy. The newspaper reveals that a body has been found, and it might be Lily's. Lucy reads it, feeling a subtle gag reflex. She tries to focus on work, but Natsuko soon points out the presence of police officers in the office. Shortly after, Lucy is escorted into a police car and taken to the station for questioning. The ride unsettles her, but she remains silent the entire time. Detective Oguchi enters the interrogation room with his colleague, Detective Kamiyama. Kamiyama speaks only Japanese, while Oguchi is bilingual in Japanese and English. The questioning begins with Oguchi asking questions in Japanese and interpreting them in English. Little do they know that Lucy speaks both English and Japanese fluently. She works as a translator. Lucy remains firm in her answers and refuses to be pressured into saying anything under duress. Oguchi points out that Lucy was the last person to see Lily before her disappearance, but Lucy corrects him. She explains that she spoke with Lily briefly before Lily left. Lucy followed her to retrieve her coat, but couldn't find her afterward. Oguchi grows frustrated, convinced that Lucy is being deliberately evasive and possibly withholding the truth. Lucy has been in Japan for just over five years, she has no family there. When Oguchi brings up her personal life, she mentions that she currently doesn't have a boyfriend. Oguchi objects to this claim, but Lucy firmly reiterates her stance, she has no boyfriend. A while before Lily's disappearance, Lucy encountered Teiji on a walkway. He's a photographer who took random shots of Lucy without asking for her permission. This annoyed her because she believed he should have asked first. Teiji typically avoids photographing people, preferring inanimate objects or anything else that catches his eye. Lucy's uniqueness was what drew his attention. After their initial introductions, the two walked to Teiji's workplace, a noodle restaurant. Over a meal of noodles, they got to know each other better. Teiji quickly noticed that they shared similar traits and asked for complete honesty in their conversations. To test this, he dared Lucy to say exactly what was on her mind at that moment. Lucy obliges. First, she mentions the noodles are too hot and the broth is overly salty. Second, she confesses that she's never been on such an unusual date before, its strangeness is unmatched. She admits she wants to leave since Teiji is just a stranger she shouldn't trust. But who walks away from someone they're attracted to? Certainly not Lucy. Teiji, impressed by her attraction to him, turns the conversation to his interest. All he wants is to take photographs of her, which Lucy finds intriguing. That night, Lucy follows Teiji to his warehouse-like apartment. She finds the space incredible. Lucy has never had a proper photograph taken of her before. She asks Teiji for directions on how to pose, but he encourages her to pose however she likes. Unsure, Lucy simply stands there, while Teiji begins snapping photos. Gradually she grows bolder, her expression turning daring as she moves closer to Teiji. Her mind is set on taking things further when a rumbling interrupts them. An earthquake strikes, and Teiji leads Lucy into a bunker for safety. Later on, Lucy attends her string quartet's rehearsal. The group of four specializes in playing only stringed instruments. After the session ends, Mrs. Yamamoto presents Lucy with a homegrown plant as a birthday gift, explaining that she rarely gives it away. The rest of the group joins in wishing Lucy a happy birthday. That evening, Lucy heads to a lounge and meets Bob, her friend. Bob introduces her to Lily, who's seated with Natsuko. Lily has just arrived in Japan and is struggling to find a home. She doesn't understand Japanese, making the process of securing an apartment nearly impossible. Bob enlists Lucy's help to assist Lily. As the two women chat, Natsuko and Bob head off to get drinks. Later, Natsuko and Lily take to the stage for a karaoke session. Lucy stays behind with Bob and voices her discomfort about Lily staying with her. She points out that Lily seems nothing like her and questions how she'll manage to look after her. While Lucy continues to express her frustration, the others enjoy their time on stage. Bob apologizes for not asking Lucy beforehand. In the days that follow, Lucy has more photo sessions with Teiji at his apartment. In transit, Lucy and Natsuko chat about Teiji. Natsuko is excited for Lucy, as she shares a few of Teiji's attributes. Natsuko brings up concerns about intimacy, but Lucy reveals the truth. Nothing has happened yet. 
She has decided she won't initiate anything. If intimacy is to occur, it will have to be Teiji who takes the lead. The photoshoot sessions at Teiji's apartment continue with Lucy often presenting a melancholic expression during the shoots. At one point, she has her head lowered when Teiji gently touches her chin to adjust her face. This seems to send her a signal. When Teiji turns away to switch the film, Lucy starts removing her clothes, partially exposing her breasts. Teiji, ever the gentleman, doesn't take advantage of her. Instead, he calmly asks Lucy to cover herself, which she does without shame. Lucy later visits Kato's home, where Kato dresses her in a fine traditional outfit typically worn by young unmarried women. Kato, a member of the string quartet, shares her struggles. She confesses that her position as a magistrate intimidates most men, leaving her unmarried. Now, as she grows older, Kato reflects that her only potential suitors would likely be widowers or men with medical conditions. She laughs off her situation as they enjoy a meal together. Their laughter is interrupted by the sound of the doorbell. Assuming it's Yamamoto, Lucy heads to the stairs to assist her. She greets Yamamoto, who is climbing up, but Yamamoto is startled and loses her footing. She falls down the stairs and breaks her neck. Lucy is frozen in shock, unable to move as confusion and horror consume her. An ambulance arrives and takes Yamamoto's body away. She has passed away from the fall. Needing comfort, Lucy seeks out Teiji at his apartment. She recounts the events to him, hoping to feel better, but she doesn't shy away from her deepest fears. Lucy feels like the Grim Reaper, as tragedy seems to follow her wherever she goes. Teiji listens with understanding, but Lucy insists no one can truly understand her experience. Teiji reassures her that he does, and promises to open up more in time. Soon, she'll understand why. To prove his empathy, Teiji shows Lucy a photograph of his late aunt, the woman who raised him. He speaks briefly about her and concludes that tragedy is an inevitable part of life. Holding Lucy's hand, he squeezes it gently before leaning in to kiss her. Lucy doesn't resist, she has wanted this. Their passionate kissing intensifies, leading to them fully giving in to their desires. By the end of the night, both are sexually satisfied. The scene shifts back to the detectives questioning Lucy. Kamiyama quizzes Lucy about Teiji. Lucy acknowledges that she knows Teiji and reveals that Lily knows him too. She alludes to having dated Teiji for a while. Oguchi is furious. He had earlier asked Lucy about her relationship status, and Lucy denied being involved with anyone. Lucy calmly clarifies that Oguchi hadn't used the correct tense in his question, so her answer was accurate at the time. Way before the interrogation, Lucy takes Lily apartment hunting. Lily mentions having dreamt of a specific apartment, and the one Lucy shows her perfectly matches the description. Lily wastes no time inquiring about the details of the apartment. Later, Lucy and Lily sit in a restaurant as Lucy reviews the house contract. She finds it acceptable. Meanwhile, Lily comments that Bob is sexy. Lucy doesn't respond. She doesn't see Bob in that way. When Lily asks if Lucy has a boyfriend, Lucy confirms that she does. A waiter arrives shortly after to take their order. Lucy notices how dependent Lily is on her and decides to give her a quick Japanese lesson. She shows Lily how to order coffee and Lily picks it up quickly. When Lily successfully orders her coffee, both are excited about the small achievement. At Teiji's apartment, Teiji prints copies of Lucy's photographs. As he works, he shares his journey into photography, recalling how no one wanted to pursue it when he was young. He recounts the old belief that taking someone's photograph could steal their soul. Teiji admits he understands the sentiment. He believes that every photograph captures and retains a part of the subject. Lucy and her friends, Bob, Natsuko, and Lily, take a trip into the woods. While walking with Bob, Lucy talks about Teiji, mentioning that they both share a peculiar connection. Later, Lucy and Lily are walking along a wooded path when Lucy missteps and sprains her ankle. Lily quickly comes to her aid, examining the injury and confirming it's just a sprain. When Bob approaches and sees Lily tending to Lucy's leg, Lucy jokes that Lily is enjoying herself. Lily casually corrects her, explaining that she knows exactly what she's doing. Her experience as a nurse before moving to Japan is coming in handy. Deep in the woods, the group arrives at a recreational center with segmented swimming pools for relaxation. Bob and Natsuko enter one pool unclad, while Lucy and Lily join another, also unclothed. As they relax, Lily asks Lucy about Teiji, wondering what he does with all the photographs he takes. Lucy admits she doesn't know, she isn't sure if he sells them or has other uses for them, and the thought unsettles her. Lily expresses interest in meeting Teiji, and Lucy is fine with the idea. At Teiji's apartment, Lucy tries to convince him to make good use of the photographs. She encourages him to either sell them or make an exhibition. 
She only wants Teiji to put his work out there, but Teiji vehemently disagrees. He firmly says all photographs are for his collection. Without a blink, he states he's leaving for work and steps out. Lucy follows Teiji behind, trying to understand what kind of person Teiji is. She's about to take a turn and depart, but then asks if they could see each other in the coming days. Teiji, without lifting an eyelid, says he has work in the coming days. He promises to call Lucy before she utters another word. Lucy runs back to Teiji's apartment. She has seen Teiji pick up his key from a spot and now she uses it to gain access to the apartment and searches Teiji's private locker. There's a file containing pictures of a lady. The pictures range from beautiful to concerning. Lucy hears footsteps and the sound of the door cracking. In no time, Teiji finds her. He's enraged but doesn't harm Lucy. He keeps the file back in place and warns her to desist from repeating her actions. Lucy is sorry. She regrets violating his space but states that she only wanted to know personal stuff about him. They share a hug, and this pacifies Teiji. The lady's photographs Lucy found were Sachi's, Teiji's ex-girlfriend. Teiji was once in love. He mentions that Sachi went missing suddenly, and every effort to look for her proved abortive. He only stopped looking for her when he met Lucy. Lucy's time on the train is riddled with thoughts of what must have transpired between Teiji and Sachi. Sachi's photographs come off as if they were taken just after a sad encounter. She imagines negative premises and presupposes that Sachi must have run off based on Teiji's bad habits. Lucy takes Lily to Teiji's workplace, where they enjoy the noodles Teiji makes for them. After the meal, they all go to a location, and Teiji takes photographs of both Lucy and Lily. Another day, Lily visits Lucy. She loves Lucy's house and mentions she doesn't come there often, the reason being that Teiji might also be there, and her presence might spoil fun time for Lucy. Lucy laughs it off and mentions that Teiji doesn't visit her. Lily laments that Lucy has no photos of Teiji in her apartment. Well, Teiji doesn't like his pictures taken. Lily also points out that Teiji is very obsessed with Lucy. Lucy doesn't think so, but Lily can tell. Lily has a gift. She can read palms and tarot cards. She can tell people's behaviors too. Lily is always wary of randomly looking at people's palms as she'll definitely see things. A gift she can't control. Lucy offers her palm. She wants Lily to prove her gift. Lily looks at Lucy's palm and mentions seeing emptiness in the past and an accident that caused a sudden change in her life. She sees several more accidents and things tied to tragedy. Lucy is curious about her future with Teiji, but Lily says she can't get a clear picture of it. That night, while they're asleep, an earthquake wakes them up. The ripple doesn't last long though and they hear a whistling sound afterward. Lucy remembers hearing the same sound during an earlier earthquake at Teiji's apartment. Teiji had called it the earthquake bird a bird that sings after earthquakes. Lily notices Lucy is upset, so she kisses her cheek and tells her to go back to sleep. The next morning, Lily says she had a good night's sleep. Lucy is surprised because of the earthquake, but Lily claims that she doesn't remember it happening. Lucy doesn't know how to react. Lucy gets ready to leave, and Lily asks for a coat because it looks like rain. Lucy gives her one, and Lily takes it and leaves. At Teiji's apartment, Lucy takes part in another photo session. She stops halfway, saying it's tiring. She suggests doing something else, like going to a bar, and Teiji agrees. At the bar, Bob complains about the band, but Lucy thinks they are fine. Bob tells Lucy he had a brief relationship with Lily, but says Lily is inconsistent and loses interest quickly. Teiji goes to get a drink, and Lily, who is on the dance floor, starts dancing with him. Teiji indulges her, and Lucy watches them. The dance becomes more energetic, and Lucy steps in to stop them. Lily doesn't notice the tension, still moving as if nothing happened. The music ends soon after. As they leave, Teiji mentions that Lucy seemed jealous during the dance. Lucy denies it, but Teiji says he meant for her to feel that way. While walking home, Teiji tells Lucy that Sachi is his first and only intimate partner. He wasn't with anyone before her. Lucy's first intimate experience was deeply unsettling. At 14, she went to meet a friend, but instead encountered her friend's father. He offered her vodka, and as she got tipsy, he took advantage of her. She didn't resist, but he disliked her compliance. Not long after, he passed away, and Lucy lost the baby she hadn't even fully processed having. The pain of being taken advantage of still haunts her. Lucy occasionally gets visions of people who have passed on. On her way to Kato's place, she sees the late Yamamoto, the stairs leading to Kato's apartment bring back sad memories, adding to her unease. Lucy meets Lily at the train station. They had planned a trip to have some fun. When Lily asks about Teiji's whereabouts, Lucy says she hasn't seen him for days. 
Lucy is fine with going on the trip with just Lily, but Teiji shows up unexpectedly, insisting on joining them. Over drinks, Teiji and Lily chat away, leaving Lucy silent. She's probably jealous of the connection Teiji and Lily seem to share. When Lucy finally contributes to the conversation, it only makes things awkward. That night, Lily sleeps between Lucy and Teiji. Lucy can't get any rest. Past midnight, her mind plays tricks on her. She imagines herself kissing Lily. The thought spirals, and she envisions herself, Lily, and Teiji kissing each other. Her feelings turn to anger when she imagines Teiji kissing just Lily, but she jolts out of the thought, unsettled. At breakfast, Lucy suggests places they could visit. Lily proposes something different. Lucy suggests visiting both locations instead of choosing, but Teiji only smirks. He seems aware of what's on Lucy's mind. It feels like a power play. Lucy starts to resent Lily. Teiji, as if enjoying the tension, has even told her before how much he loves seeing her jealous. The group visits a cliff. Teiji and Lily move ahead easily, but Lucy struggles. She feels nauseous and eventually stops, puking on the ground. The scene draws the attention of her friends. Lily lays her down on the bare grass, concerned. As Lucy closes her eyes, a memory from her childhood resurfaces, her schoolmates throwing stones at her. Through hazy vision, she notices Teiji considering photographing her, even in her vulnerable state. Too weak to react, she passes out. Teiji proceeds to take photos of her unconscious form. When Lucy wakes up, she's alone on the cliff. Angry and betrayed, she catches a ride back to town. She guesses that Teiji and Lily are at the second location they'd planned to visit, and she's right. When she finds them, she lashes out, scolding them for abandoning her. Lily seems baffled by her anger, unable to see the issue. Teiji apologizes on both their behalf, which irritates Lucy further. Why use we? It feels calculated. She storms away in frustration. In the crowd back in town, Lucy's mind races. She replays moments where Teiji seemed to show affection for Lily. Her thoughts spiral until Teiji's sudden appearance snaps her out of it. He takes her hand and leads her to a quiet house surrounded by vegetation. Teiji calls it a place of healing, hoping Lucy can confront whatever trauma she's dealing with. They hug, and Lucy confesses her feelings for him, admitting how much she likes him. When they return to town, they get off the train and part ways, Teiji going one direction, while Lucy and Lily take another. But in a blink, Lily is gone. Lucy's first thought is that she's with Teiji, and she's right. Running back, she finds Teiji photographing Lily. The questioning resumes. This time, Lucy doesn't hold back. Without mincing words, she confesses that she hit Lily's head with a brick. Her admission of guilt is all they'll get from her. After the scene at the train station, Lucy isolates herself completely. She stops answering or returning calls and doesn't show up at work. Concerned, Natsuko tracks her down and confronts her, but Lucy refuses to explain, instead screaming at Natsuko to leave her house. After Natsuko leaves, Lucy goes for a walk and stops by Teiji's workplace. Through the window, she spots Lily inside. The sight infuriates her. Their eyes meet briefly, before Lucy turns and leaves. Later, Lucy is at home when Lily knocks on her door. Lily wants to talk. Tearfully, she confesses to having an affair with Teiji, confirming Lucy's suspicions. She apologizes, saying she doesn't understand what's happening, but feels it was inevitable. Lucy, overwhelmed with anger, slams the door in Lily's face, leaving her standing in the rain. Consumed by rage and heartbreak over the man she loves, the only one she feels truly understands her, Lucy grabs a knife and rushes out into the storm. She walks a distance, searching for Lily, but doesn't find her. Back at the police station, Lucy is now in a holding cell. During another questioning session, the detectives inform her that the body they found doesn't match Lily's description. They question why Lucy confessed to hurting Lily. She admits that although she didn't hurt Lily, she had intended to and only confessed out of guilt. However, Lucy doesn't reveal why she wished Lily gone. Detective Kamiyama was skeptical from the start. He admits he never fully believed Lucy's confession and senses guilt, but not the truth. Shifting focus, he asks why Lucy moved to Japan. Lucy recounts an incident from her childhood. She describes how the top of a tree was her favorite escape, a place to read or cool off. Her brothers often teased her there, throwing objects and refusing to leave her alone. One day, in a fit of anger, she jumped on her brother Marcus. Marcus tripped and fell onto a wooden plank that had a sharp, rusty nail protruding from it. The nail pierced his head, and despite the doctor's efforts, Marcus passed away a few days later. Lucy never recovered from the incident. Overcome with guilt, she stopped speaking for years, 
Feeling unworthy of her family's love, she devised an escape plan. Her first step was learning Japanese to ensure an easy passage to Japan. Though the story is touching, it has no direct connection to Lily's case. Lucy signs a retraction paper and is released from custody. On her way home, Lucy begins to piece together why Teiji has such a habit of photographing the women in his life. Sachi's pictures come to mind, and she becomes sure that Sachi had a difficult experience before each photo was taken. Why does Teiji seem to enjoy capturing women when they're upset or troubled? She suspects that he might be hiding something, and she is determined to find out what it is. She decides to visit Teiji's apartment. Lucy breaks into his locker and finds a collection of photographs. Among them is a file filled with pictures of her, and to her surprise, there are also photos of Lily. The file starts with images of Lily smiling, but as she flips through, Lucy sees photos of Lily in distress, scared and tearful. Toward the end of the file, there are images of Lily lying motionless on the ground. She takes the file and heads to the police station. Wanting to keep things discreet, she asks to speak with Detective Kamiyama, but is told he's unavailable. Lucy doesn't explain her reasons for coming and simply leaves the station. When Lucy arrives home, Teiji is waiting for her. He has been waiting for days, ever since she visited the station. He admits that Lily was right about him, that he is obsessed with her. Teiji, tearfully, begs her to leave with him. But Lucy is firm in her response, saying this situation has to end. This enrages Teiji, so he pushes Lucy into a chair and forces her neck down onto it. In a desperate attempt to protect herself, Lucy grabs a jug of water and strikes Teiji hard with it. The glass shatters on impact, piercing his head, and he bleeds out, eventually giving up the ghost. Lucy moves in with Kato, still weighed down by what has happened. Kato tries to comfort her, suggesting that nothing was her fault, but Lucy disagrees. She believes she is at fault. Maybe, if she had just listened to Lily when she came to her, things might have turned out differently. Kato listens but disagrees. Lucy then reflects on an incident a few days before Yamamoto's passing. She had applied a substance to the stairs just before Yamamoto fell. Does that make her responsible too? Both women are overcome with emotion as they hold hands, tears flowing freely between them. 